This video is about making proteins or protein synthesis. So recall from the previous video uh, that we start off with our genes and our DNA and our DNA stored inside of our nucleus and that this is very important information that uh, we actually don't want to leave the nucleus so we create a, a mes message and that's in the form of mRNA and then the mRNA is sent out of the nucleus uh, to the cytoplasm of the cell and that message is read and then proteins are created from that message. So I want you to look at this image here and I want you to figure out what are the differences, what differences do you observe between DNA and RNA? Take a moment uh, to look at this image and jot down uh, a list of differences. Pause and unpause when you're ready to proceed. So a few things and we can look at uh, different characteristics. Um, some of them we can see here and some of them we have to infer. Um, so let's do the number of strands. You can see that the DNA is this double helix so it has two strands but yet mRNA is single strand so that's just one strand. If we look at the bases, we look up close, you see that there are four bases in DNA and there are also four bases in RNA but if you look closely you see that um, there's an A in both, a G, and a C in both. In DNA, there's a T, but in RNA, there's a U, and this base U is called uracil. So wherever you would want a T to be in RNA, you have a U instead. The DNA is stuck inside of the nucleus, while the RNA is able to leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm. And you think about the purpose of of these molecules. Well, DNA is going to have instructions for every single protein that the body makes. But when you're sending out an mRNA message, it only has the message for that particular protein. Now, if you think about the name, well, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and the D stands for the sugar, which is deoxyribose. Well, an RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, so its sugar is ribose. So there's a difference in the sugar, deoxyribose versus ribose. So if we think through this a bit, um, recall we have our DNA message and that's going to give us information for the mRNA message, which is going to lead to the uh, amino acids and the proteins. Now if we look at the DNA, we see it in two strands. One strand we call the coding strand, the other one we call the non-coding strand. So you can probably infer that the coding strand is going to actually have the message that's read by the cell that's going to give us our mRNA message. So if you look at the top, uh, look at the coding strand, uh, what do you notice between the coding strand and the mRNA? So pause the video, think about it, write down your answers, then unpause when you're ready to uh, proceed. So yes, if you, you probably figured out that the coding strand is complementary or base pairs with the mRNA message. So you look at the T in the coding strand, well, what's the opposite of T? It's an A. Now you look at the A in DNA, what's the opposite of that? It's a T, but since we know there are no Ts in, in RNA, it's going to be a U. And we see our C is going to give us a G in RNA, and on and on and on. So we have our coding message coding strand, which is going to uh, give us the opposite for our mRNA. And then our mRNA message is going to give us our amino acids. And you can see here that on the bottom are the amino acids that make up this protein. So you see at the bottom, you see uh, methylene and lysine uh, that are going to be our amino acids. Now there are 20 different types of amino acids. So you can see here there's a, a three-dimensional structure for these amino acids. You see their name, there's an abbreviation, and then a one-letter uh, abbreviation for those amino acids. Well, how do we determine uh, which amino acid is going to be added to our protein? Well, uh, there are these charts you can look at, uh, which are the codon charts. A codon is a triplet base of mRNA. So if you think about the different possibilities, there are, if there are four different bases, there are going to be 64 different combinations of the triplets. So you might have an AAA or UAU or GCG, 
uh, regardless, that's going to be in our mRNA. So what we can do if we know the codon for our mRNA, like UUU, we can look at it on either of these charts and it'll tell us the name of the amino acid. Uh, the one chart is going to give us the abbreviation, or the other chart is going to actually give us the name. A couple things you should notice is that there is what we call a start codon, so AUG in the mRNA uh, codes for an uh, amino acid called methanine, which is, the, which is basically the first amino acid. Uh, it's the message. It's going to let us know this is the beginning of the protein. And then if you see that there are these uh, three stop codons, which uh, do not code for uh, an amino acid. And in fact, it's just a message to the cell that this protein is finished. Uh, do not add any more amino acids. Stop. So you should be comfortable navigating between these two uh, codon charts. And if we look at them closer, um, we see that, uh, for example, uh, on this chart, see the first base is here. So let's look for A, G, C. So we look at first base here, we look at the A's, we know the A's are across here, and we look at the second base, we look for the G, so we have A, G, and then we look for here for the third base, we get the C, and we see that A, G, C is serine, or S-E-R, amino acid. Then we look here in this chart, we actually start from the center. So let's look for G, A, U, where we start with the first letter, Start in the center, so uh, so we look for G, G, second base, we look over here, so let's say G, A, here, and then C, we look here for C, and so G, A, C, we see that that's aspartic acid. So you should be, you should feel comfortable navigating between uh, either one of these charts.